Sports on Air. So, um, I guess for context, we're just back uh, in Manila. Uh, he was last year in 2014 for the NBA as well, and um, he'll be joining us for the NBA PX Philippines invitation of this coming weekend. So, uh, feel free to ask away your, your questions. Go ahead. Anyone? Okay, Rip, uh, mm -hmm. of course, this is a 3x3 event that we're going to be talking about. Yep. You take pride of uh, the, the best five alive. Uh, among those best five alive, who who will you take with you on a three-on-three -three matchup? Oh, man, listen. Uh, first of all, excited to be here for the event, uh, 3x Philippines. Uh, why is it so important to me? Because I grew up playing Hoop It Up, and Hoop It Up was a three-on-three -three tournament. And uh, if I had to pick three guys on my team, which would be tough, do I get any substitutions or just? Um, yeah, I you, get may, two you subs, may have right? yeah, two two guys with you, three on three, and maybe oh, one sub. Maybe. Oh, okay, I gotta get. I gotta probably put Chauncey because one, he's gonna give me the ball, like he was my point guard, so I always gotta pick him. And then, man, I can't do that <laughs> on my five. I, I'm picking all five. I can't do that. You, there's too many cameras here. <laughs> still make cameras here. Yeah. Just know that I'm taking all five of them with me, regardless of what they say, regardless of what the rules are. All right. Rich, uh, I remember you had a ritual on your feet, though. Say it one more time. You had a ritual when you took your Okay, feet, yeah. Any story behind that? Yeah, my uh, free throw routine, uh, the story behind it was as a kid when I used to get to the free throw line, and most kids do to this day, they forget to use their legs when they shoot free throws, especially when it comes late in the game, third quarter, fourth quarter, overtime, uh, because of you know the amount of minutes you play or how tired you are. And the, the one dribble to the right was a reminder to use, your, to use my legs without me telling, it, telling myself that. Uh, so I wanted to kind of make it normal. I wanted to kind of make it a part of my routine where the movement uh, and the muscle memory automatically uh, determines uh, and tells my mind that, hey, you know what, to use your legs. So uh, I get the routine probably, I started doing this when I was like in ninth grade and kept it all the way until I got to the league. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Rich, what can you say about the uh, other countries um, uh, catching up with the talent of the Team USA as evidenced by the recent FIBA World Cup? Oh man, listen, first of all, basketball has grown so much. I mean, you got to take your hats off to uh, David Stern and Adam Silver. Uh, did an amazing job growing our game, uh, especially internationally. Uh, when you look at the lead now and look at the top players in the league, you can probably argue that five, six or seven of the top 10 guys are from international uh, countries. Uh, just tells you how much our game has grown, uh, which is amazing. Uh, I love the way that now guys are getting the opportunity to play in different countries and, and the NBA and the league bringing different games all across the world uh, for the fans. Uh, so it's just a, a thing that we we wanted to, to grow the game that way, where now you get the best players from not just the United States, but uh, all across the world, and it's just amazing to see right now. Rip, which NBA player today reminds you most of how you play constantly, running around, using screens, trying to get open? Do you see any player now that when you watch him, you're like, you know, I used to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's funny because I tell my kids all the time, I'll be like, hey, you know, because my, my one son, his favorite player is Steph Curry, right? Uh, so, and I tell him, I say, son, when, when, when dad played, because he didn't get a really op opportunity to really see me play. Like, he just looks at me as, hey, that's just dad. Like, the guy sitting on the couch telling everybody what to do. But uh, I would say Steph Curry. I would say Clay Thompson, uh, them two guys, uh, because them guys can score 40 to 50 points without even dribbling the ball if they didn't want to. And I believe that's the hardest thing to guard. Uh, Golden State, ha to have the luxury of having two guys on the same team, usually it's only one. Usually teams only have one guy that can do that. So uh, just to see their success over the years and have not just them two, but Kevin Durant too, another guy that was great with moving out the ball, uh, was almost like a cheat code. But uh, I, would, I would have to say uh, Steph Curry and uh, Clay Thompson. Okay, Rip, uh, jumping off from that, uh, right now it's a three-point game, and uh, they say that the mid-range is somewhat dying, and you 
take pride from uh, having a very good mid-range game. What do you think about that thought that the mid-range game is uh, slowly dying? Well, I tell all the kids across the world, don't listen to what people are saying about the mid-range game is dying. Do it as much as possible because, again, when you look at the great players in our game, uh, especially the great scorers, they all have a mid-range shot, right? Especially in the playoffs when the games are a little bit more tighter, uh, teams are not shooting 53s a game. Uh, now they're trying to get the best opportunity, the best shot as possible. But if you look at guys like Kawhi Leonard, you look at guys like Devin Booker, these guys are considered top 10 guys in our league. Uh, they understand the art of the mid-range shot. And if you're, if you're, if you're able to uh, figure that out, you'll be, it, it'll be impossible for, to, to guard you, especially if you got a three ball and you can get to the, to get to the uh, paint. What's your funniest Rashid Wallace story? Rashid is crazy. <laughs> you have one specific I mean, movie? like, I got a lot of rated R Rashid stories. <laughs> <laughs> but just know this. I always say about Rashid Wallace. Rashid was probably my favorite teammate of all time. I mean, the guy is uh, a selfless individual. One of the most loyal and honorable teammates that I ever had. Uh, he's a guy that could easily be a top 10 player uh, of all time. I mean, but he was very unselfish, right? If you look at all the great players, great power forwards in that era, the Dirk Nowitzkis, the, the Chris Webbers, the Kevin Garnett's, uh, Rashid is right there, the Tim Duncans, he's, he's, he's right there. Uh, but for him, it wasn't about all-star games. It wasn't about making the all-NBA team. It was about winning games and winning championships. So I always tell people, you see all the technical fouls out there, but behind closed door, Rashid is probably the guy that you want to hang out with 24 seven. Yes, Marty. Hey, Rip, welcome to the Philippines. Um, you know, Filipinos are so crazy about basketball. You even see it in the Filipino cultural heritage nights, like in Golden State Warriors. What can you say about your excitement of being here in the country? Well, first of all, like I said, uh, the fans here in the Philippines in, in Manila has been amazing. Right, I mean, uh, came here 10 years ago, uh, didn't didn't know how big the game uh, was until I got here. Uh, I, I feel as though when I got off the plane, they greeted me uh, with just a lot of love, almost like when I first got to Detroit and after winning the championship, a lot of excitement there. Uh, it's just amazing how our game has grown, especially international, uh, especially here on the island. Uh, so I, I just think that it's, it's, it's a, fun thing. It's a great thing for the game. Uh, and I'm just happy to be here. Right. Thanks, Rip. Rip, back to my question earlier. Uh, do you think it's about time that we have an all-star game between Team USA against the world? Do you think it's a good idea? And who do you think will win? You know what? I thought about that, right? But uh, at the end of the day, I didn't like it, right? And the reason why I didn't like it is because then it cheats guys that should make the all-star team, right? You can have the, the, the All-Star game is made up of, what, 12 players on each roster with a couple injured guys. Uh, and I just feel as though if you've got more international players that should be All-Star, then they should be an All-Star. If you've got more uh, American players that should be an All-Star, mm -hmm. they should be the All-Star. So it's hard to pick the best 12 international players and the best 12 American players to play an All-Star game, knowing that it could be the top 20 players in the league could be international players. The top 20 players could be American players that season. So I uh, don't like the idea. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, Rip, uh, the NBA preseason tournament is ongoing. It's on its first year. And the, the format is pretty much like a March, March Madness in which you play the hard yeah. games with UConn and the one attraction ship with them. So how do you uh, compare uh, mentally preparing for a knockout game compared to a seven uh, game series and the uh, NBA playoff format? Well, it's very interesting because one, right, uh, it's in the middle of the season, mm -hmm. right? So when they announced it, and to this day, I'm still trying to figure figure out all the new rules, right? But uh, I like it in a way that you make the regular season a lot more competitive, especially knowing when guys usually, especially the veteran players, uh, usually say, all right, you know what, I really got to turn it up in April, May, I mean, I, I mean, April, June, uh, March, 
you know, late in the season where to make a run for for the NBA Finals. Uh, I just think that is, I love the, I don't know if, if you guys like it, but I love the changing of the courts, right? Kind of, kind of, you know, from a visual standpoint, uh, it gives you that wow factor. It gives it a little different feel than uh, any regular season game. Uh, but I enjoy it. Uh, $500,000 is a lot of money, right? <laughs> it is, you know. And for, for the guys to get a trip to Vegas <laughs> in the middle of the season. So uh, I think it's been fun. I think it's been very exciting for the lead. I think guys are very excited about it, and hopefully they can do it for years to come. Okay. Rip, uh, talk, talk about the, of course, Detroit is kind of, kind of start struggling right now. Uh, what do you think it has to be, has to happen with Detroit uh, in getting some more wins and uh, unlocking the potential of the young ones? We got to get older fast, right? Uh, in the NBA, it's hard to win when you're young. Uh, we got a lot of young guys on our team. We got a young nucleus. And I tell people all the time, you got to be patient. Right, you're not going to win overnight. I mean, yeah, you see the high lottery picks. K. Cunningham has just came off a uh, serious injury, missed, you know, last season, and now being back in the fold, new coach, new system, uh, new structure uh, there. Uh, so I think it's going to take time. You know, I think they're going to they're they're still trying to figure out, you know, what pieces fit, and trying to put the right veteran guys around the young guys to kind of show them the way because I think that's something that that is missed that is really needed, especially when you want to bring a, a winning culture to any, any organization. We'll accommodate two more questions from uh, Ken and Carla, and then we'll like, escort everyone out, and CNN just stay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Welcome to the Philippines. Thank I'm you. I'm from CNN. Um, just wanted to get your thoughts on the NBA's new rule on board management, where no more than one star player can uh, be unavailable for the same game. You know what? Uh, I, I like the new rules. I mean, uh, because again, uh, you know, from a fan's perspective, uh, especially getting the opportunity to come see their favorite player play, uh, especially if you're, let, let's say, you're a LeBron James fan and you live in Washington, D.C., and you only know that the Lakers only come there to play once a year. Uh, so for that kid or that fan to, to come come to get an opportunity to watch his favorite player and him not to be be listed as as available, it's tough, you know. Uh, for the game, uh, it's, it's, it's tough from a competitive standpoint because again, you know, basketball has meant so much to us professional professional players for so many years, and we know that you know you want to give it your all each and every night. So uh, the low management, I, you know, I really didn't like. I didn't really care care too much about because I think that if you're healthy, you should play, right? Because you're not just letting down the fans; you're letting down your teammates uh, and things like that. Thank you. I'll get my last question. So, Rip, if um, your UConn team plays against your Detroit Pistons team, oh. who would win that game? And uh, lastly, describe to me one word in one word what um, each of these teams would represent you. Uh, if I had to say one word that represents both teams, champions, right? We all want to be champions. <laughs> so uh, that, and if, if the two teams had to compete against each other, oh man, the Pistons would blow them out. Really? Yeah, it would blow them out. I mean, because I tell people all the time, it's like when you win an NCAA championship and you come into an NBA locker room and you start talking about what you did in college, Guys in the NBA don't respect it. <laughs> they really don't respect that. They don't. They be like, oh man, like you didn't play against the best players in the world. Mm -hmm. So when you win an NBA championship, that's respected everywhere, every locker room, regardless who you are. Every Hall of Fame player that played the game that did win it or didn't win it, they have to respect the champion, the guy that won it at the highest level. Yep. Khalid and. Um... Kevin Freeman won't be happy about that. That's cool. They my buddy. <laughs> they they understand. They understand on that one. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Do you have your championship ring with you right now? Oh, not in ring. Not at all. It's locked <laughs> up in a safe. Thank you, everyone. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nico, Yeah, it's all right. So, so you you've been here uh, before, right? Um, what was that for again? Like I think they mentioned the one. Uh, grand opening of NBA store. Okay. Um, so um, since you you're a returning visitor, um, what would be like the one thing you're looking forward to the most for this year? Uh, I think the one thing that I'm most 
uh, interested is one, interacting with the fans. I think they're a big part of our game. Uh, here in the Philippines, basketball is one of the most watched uh, events here over here. Basketball has grown internationally. Uh, when you look at the, from the league standpoint, uh, so getting the opportunity to, to speak and hang out with young ballers that have dream and aspirations to one day play at a high level and to be able to give them advice uh, as much as possible uh, is a huge blessing. Uh, I've never had that opportunity as a kid to meet a professional athlete or someone that can come in and give me real information. Uh, so uh, I think it's, 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 it, that, that is one of the things that I'm most looking forward to. So talk about the the experience so far. What's the difference between 2014 and 2013 in terms of your business in the Philippines? Well, I just got here last night, so uh, I didn't really get an opportunity to get out. But I can tell you this: uh, ever since I got off the plane, the hospitality has been amazing. Uh, it just shows you how incredible the fans here uh, in the Philippines is. They greeted me uh, with a lot of love. Uh, so I think I'm ha I'm going to have just as much of a great time that I had when I was here 10 years ago. Hi. Um, a lot of the guys a while ago um, asked you a bunch of like the choice questions, right? Yes. But I want to take take it back, like you know, uh, your rookie season. Um, what was it like beginning your career in BC, and then how much pressure was it, like you know, sharing the passport with somebody like Emperor? Yeah, I mean, when I first got drafted by Washington, it was an amazing feeling for me because I'm from Pennsylvania. And that was only an hour and a half to me for my parents and my friends to come and watch me play. Uh, I thought that was very great uh, and, and, uh, for them to be able to come and watch me play. But uh, it was it was difficult. It was hard. I mean, I just won a, uh, a national champion. I think I only lost one or two games my uh, junior year in college, and now coming to the Wizards and only winning 18 my first year. Uh, so it was tough and happened to come off the bench, uh, but also being able to learn uh, from a great vet that I had in front of me, which was Mitch Richmond, uh, one of the great two guards. But then getting the opportunity uh, to play with Michael Jordan in, in year year three, like to be able to shoot backcourt with him. I mean, like, like you ask any kid growing up and someone says to you, hey man, there's one day, which I still got to pinch myself right now, like one day you're going to share the court with the GOAT. That's still crazy to me. Like even to think about it to this day, like, I mean, but uh, it was an amazing time for me to being able to learn from one of the greatest that ever played the game. So uh, just an amazing time. Were you a big fan of this that growing up? Oh, absolutely. He was my favorite player. He was my favorite player to watch. The reason why I wore 32 was because of Michael Jordan. Uh, even though he wore 23, it's 23 backwards. Uh, but uh, just to be able to interact with him, be around him, like I watched so many highlights, I watched so many great games. Uh, he was a champion, we played the same position. Uh, got a ball hit now, we didn't have a ball hit back then. <laughs> but uh, it was an amazing time. So you get to think of your experience with MJ because everyone knows MJ also loves to somehow say some Sweet pleasantry, some trash talk to, play, to the player. So, do you have any story of him doing the, those trash talk when you were with him in in DC and when you were against him when you played to Detroit? Oh, it was a lot of trash talking. I mean, I mean, I trash talk everybody though. That's a part of the game. I mean, you try different angles to try to get the advantage on your opponent. Uh, Michael would come down to trash talk, but. When he tried to trash talk, I was trying to get information. Like I was a young kid trying to be great at this game, so I'm trying to get as much information as possible because I knew at one point in time, I was gonna get my time and I wanted to be prepared. As a player, as a person, the one thing I always say is I hate being unprepared, going into a situation of not knowing. But getting the opportunity to play with him, I was able to ask him as many questions as possible to now, when, I, when it was my time, I was prepared. Okay, uh, recently Dwayne Wade said that you and uh, Ray Allen were the hardest uh, players to guard. Any reaction to this and of course the similarity of uh, the three of you? Oh man, I mean, me and Dwayne had a lot of battles, you know. Uh, we talk uh, on numerous occasions, especially now, because we didn't talk a whole lot when we played against each other because again, 
it was survival of the fittest. Like, we knew that we were gonna play them in the Eastern Conference, and you would do anything possible to get to try to get an advantage. So for him to say that uh, is, you know, amazing because you want to be respected as a player. You, as a player, you don't come on the court to be liked, but you want to be respected. And you know, I try to go out there and compete at my hardest each and every night. And to, for a great player like Dwayne to to mention me as one of the toughest guys that he had to guard. Uh, just let me know I was doing something right. Last question. Wait, so I have more questions in my end. So, now to go back to your Pistons days, I mean, your, your Pistons team take, takes pride in, in your defense, but in today's NBA, how do you think your defense would thrive in today's NBA? Oh, man, our defense would lock some teams up. Like, it wouldn't be 130, 140 nights going against our, our Pistons teams. I mean, because we had, we, had, we had rules, like, we had laws that we, we we uh, uh, had among us. Like one of them was like no dunks. You watch the game now, you get 10, 15, 20 dunks in the game, right? Uh, if we know a guy was a shooter, we were taking that away. He gets no threes today, right? Uh, I just feel I just feel as though we were, uh, we understood scout report. We understood that, hey, you know what? Our offense was going to be our offense, but if we're going to win a championship, it's going to rely on the defense end. Um, you go ahead, Miko. Okay, yes, Another Christmas question. Um, how close are you guys? Like after all these years, you know, like uh, after winning that championship, um, you guys still get to catch up, talk to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we 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 talk probably twice to three times a week, right? Oh uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, like we just I just got a text because we're on a group text and Tayshawn made a comment about Rashid, he just went on a podcast, and he <laughs> made a comment on the podcast. So our relationship is bigger than basketball, right? That's why we call ourselves the best five a lot, because we embody something special on the court, but it wasn't just on the court, it was off the court too. We hung together New Year's Eve, we did everything together on the road trip, uh, especially when you look at the league, uh, where there's so much money involved, so many egos and, and things like that. We didn't get caught up in that, like we, we got caught up in the relationship. The relationship uh, and the brotherhood was bigger than anything else. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Habang mainit ang mga laman sa ating mga paboritong liga, mag-register sa 1xbet. Pwede nyo gamitin ang inyong browser or ang cellphone mapa Android man o iOS. Gamitin lang ang inyong mobile number at huwag kalimutan ilagay sa promo code ang 1x on air. Kapag ginawa nyo yan, pwede kayo magkaroon ng bonus up to 7,000 pesos. Pwede nyo gamitin ang GCash account nyo para makapag-deposit or mag-cash out. Simple lang, di ba? Kaya mag-register na sa 1xbet. Thank you for watching. Click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified with our latest videos.